Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a Bargello table runner. The Bargello pattern is a pattern that's made with strips, usually strips that are all the same width. We're going to be using a jelly roll that we cut out here. Here's what the pattern looks like. So you're going to sew a bunch of strips side by side and then into a big strip tube. Now the reason we get the movement here is because those strips, after they're in a tube, will be cut different widths. Let me show you a simple Bargello. This is a Bargello placemat. Now for this particular placemat, all the strips after they were in a tube were cut the same width. And it's very pretty, but you don't get that feeling of movement the way you do here. For today's table runner, we are going to be cutting the strips different widths so we can get that nice sense of movement. And to accent that, we're going to put in a different color. We're going to put in burgundy mixed in with our grays and blacks. And then we're really going to get that movement and flow. I've picked the strips out of the jelly roll that I want to use for the runner. I have eight fabrics here, eight different fabrics, and I've got an exact set of another eight, exactly the same, because we're going to need two strip units to make the table runner. Now, we've got a nice range. It's good to have a medium, some lights, some darks, and then it's really going to look a lot better if we stick in an accent color that has just a little bit of zip. That's really going to make that movement show up really nicely in the table runner. The next step is to take all the strips and sew them side by side into one big strip unit. It's important to keep your strips in the same order. So I like to take a little binder clip and just hold it like that. It keeps them from falling off of my machine and getting mixed up. So I'm going to just take off my first two strips that I'm going to sew with, and then I'm just going to clamp the others back together. That way, if it vibrates off the machine, they will stay in order. Now we're just going to stitch these two strips together along one long edge. You want to use a small stitch length here, so I'm going to make my stitch length a little bit smaller because for a future step we're going to be cutting this and you don't want the seams to come apart, so it's good to use a small stitch length right here. Quarter inch seam always. You want to lay these right on top of themselves. Don't stretch one or the other. And just sew right along the edge. This step goes really fast. We are going to finger press this seam allowance to the right. So I like to do it from the top. So I'm just going to open this up and draw my fingernail down the seam. I am holding it open with these hands and then just pressing it down so that will stay open. I don't find it useful to iron right now. I think it's really best just to finger press. Now we're going to get our next strip off of the stack here. Reclamp it. Now it may look like I'm not being careful, but you can see with this hand here, see how these are not lined up perfect there? I'm pulling that over with this hand and then holding it down here. You do want them lined up nicely. Now this seam allowance is going to be pointing the opposite direction, so we want this seam allowance to be going to the left. So again, go to the top, aim it to the left, and just draw your finger down there. You can feel if it's going the right way. Continue to sew the strips on. I always come from the top down. I have had some people say that they need to sew in alternate directions, so sew one strip down and sew one strip up because they find that their strip set bows. I don't have that problem. I think it might have to do with if your feed dog is up real high pulling the fabric in fast. I just haven't found it to be an issue, but certainly you can sew this one from the other direction. It doesn't matter as long as 
they're all stitched on in the same order. Now this seam allowance is going to go to the right, so we are alternating. We did the first one right, the second one left, the third one right. We're going to just alternate the way those seam allowances are laying throughout the whole unit. Okay, we've just got one more strip to sew on. Now we've got the whole strip unit. You can see the seam allowances on the back. Right, left, right, left. It's just alternating the whole way. Now the last step is to take this unit, fold it together, and sew these two strips together. So we've got this nice straight edge on the top. So we're going to put this together here. Line it up and stitch that last seam. So now we're going to have a strip tube. Now the first strip tube is done. You're going to take your second set of strips and make another tube exactly the same as this. So you're going to need two exactly the same. Now we've got both strip tubes sewn and the next step is to take them to the cutting table and get ready to cut this into our strips. This last seam, when we made the tube, I didn't finger press the seam to one side or the other. It's better to keep it flat because this will lay really nice and flat on our cutting mat here. And you might want to stretch it out and make sure it's smooth, make sure you've got those nice and flat. But this makes it really easy to cut because this is still inside out and not pressed. We're going to cut this strip unit into strips. So they're going to be patchwork strips. Now if they were all cut two and a half inches wide, this is how it would turn out. And that's really, really nice. But we want to cut them different widths. So I'm going to start with three, go to two and a half, go to two, go to one and a half. So I'm going to vary the width of the strips. I have written down what I'm going to cut. You don't have to follow that exact sequence of numbers, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this sequence. I'm going to make three of these units, and then I'm going to put one set of patchwork between. So let me show you. It's easier if I show you. You want your strip tube lined up exactly on one of your cutting board lines. You don't want this laid out crooked. You want it right on one of the lines and then put your ruler on the up and down lines. Get a nice start here. So we're going to do a three inch and a two and a half and another two and a half. So you can see what I'm doing here. Now I've got a two inch and another two inch then I'm going to do a one and a half so you can see they're getting narrower and narrower and another one and a half then we're going to do a one inch. Now we're going to start making the pieces larger following the same size that we did coming down. We're going to do that backwards. So we had a one inch then we had a one and a half so I'm going to go back to one and a half. I've cut enough strips now to do one of the blocks of patchwork in the runner. I'm going to be doing three patchwork blocks and then I have a three inch strip of patchwork, this one, between and on the ends of the runner. So continue on with your other set of strips so you have three of these sections. Next step I do is to turn each one of these right side out. So I'm going to keep them in order and I'm just going to flip them right side out. So keep them in the same order. Now we are going to start here. This will be our first strip. We're going to take it apart. We're going to take our stitching apart right there. But I'm going to line these up, kind of a stair step fashion, so I know where to take all of them apart. So we're just spinning the tube around. So 
so that you can see the patchwork moving down the row here. So we're going to be taking each one of these apart, but you can see that this is going down stair-step fashion. So all we've done is rotated each new row one, so that you've got a stair-step effect. Now when you get to the one inch piece, we want our stairs to go back up. So this one is going to have that exact same one on the top and you're going to see the fabric start traveling up again. So we've got all of the rows rotated down to the small one inch wide and then rotated back up. And all we're going to do next is snip out the stitching along each one of these rows. So we're going to start here and we're going to snip out that stitching. Here's the first seam we want to take out. So we're just going to grab that. We're just going to snip out the stitching here. Now we're going to open this up and we're going to lay it back down. So you can see we've still got the stair step going so we know it's in the right order. Now the next row we're going to take out right here. You can use a seam ripper, whatever works best for you. I like these little snips. So double check every time to make sure you've still got your nice stair step. Now this one will get taken out here and you're going to continue on the whole way down. When you get the row done, you have to make sure that you put it right side up. If you put it here, it's not going to work. So you've got to make sure that you've got it laid so that your stair step is going down here. All right, we've got every row taken apart. Now when you're taking these rows apart, you might be wondering, why did I use such a small stitch length? Because it's really hard to pick all those stitches out. That's hard, but it's going to keep all of these little guys together when we go to sew the rows together. You don't want these coming apart. The next step is to sew all these rows together. You want to keep them in order again, it's real important. So I'm going to stack them on top of each other in the order in which I'm going to sew. And then I'm going to clip them or pin them. So here's the options. You can use one of your big binder clips here, they'll stay in order. I actually just take a straight pin and stick it through all of them like that because then I can just pull them off. But it is important to keep them together. If you take a break, you might forget what order they should go in, so you want to, you want to keep them all in order. We're going to take the first two strips here. Take this one, and we're going to put this one to the right of it. And then I'm going to clip them back together. So each strip I add on is going to go to the right. Put them right sides together and you'll see that most of your seam allowances will be alternating back there already. Use a quarter inch seam. You want to make sure that your seams are all lined up. Now I can feel it with my finger. I've got the back seam allowance going down the top going up and I can feel that they're meeting. Now I'm going to open this up and finger press the seam allowances to the right. And you can give it a hard finger press here. And they will stay nice and flat. Grab your next row, put it on the right side. Always a good idea to make sure you look like you've got it laid out in the right spot. Flip it over. We've got the last row to sew on here. And because we alternated the way the seam allowances went earlier, they're laying really flat in alternate directions. So this one is up, 
the bottom one is down, and it's like that for most of the row. Really the only one you have to move one way or the other is that last seam we did when we made it a tube because we didn't finger press that one at all. Again, press that seam. All these seams are going to the right. And it's pretty darn flat, but I am going to take it to the ironing board now and give it a really good steam pressing. I've got the whole unit stitched together and pressed. So I made three of these. So here's how they're going to look in a runner. We've got the three big pieces here. And we are just going to put our three inch piece on the ends and between. And now you get a really good idea of what that's going to look like. Last step is just to sew those few rows together and then the whole top will be done. I wanted to show you something that's really cool with these Bargello blocks. Our table runner has the Bargello waves going left to right, but they're also going to continue up and down. So if you have an extra patchwork there, see the pattern just continues. So you can make this block and repeat it and keep repeating it and make a whole quilt. See how the gray and the burgundy just keep going? You would just take another one of these guys and put it in there. So the quilt will be a project for another day. Right now, let's finish up the table runner. We've got the whole Bargello table runner completed. It turned out really, really nice. I quilted it in the ditch along every patchwork seam because I didn't want to take away from any of this beautiful patchwork that we have. Now it looks like it's very difficult, but remember, this is the block we were using with. So we've just got one, two, three of these. So with this basic unit, we can make this really fancy looking runner. Here's the quilting on the back side. Very simple, very effective. I hope you enjoyed watching how easy it is to make this Bargello table runner. We're going to have directions you can print out on our website, then you can make this at home. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and have fun quilting! Mm -hmm.